a wonderful uh, arioso from the cantata written by Johann Sebastian Bach. someone cared enough to share this good news with us. Love when shared is not divided, but multiplied. Love given away is not diminished, but expanded. May our gathering beckon and welcome those near and far to know the love of God's presence. stinky whale. I imagine being stuck there in that whale for three days. The stench is bad as the Revere Beach at low tide. Yes. I felt claustrophobic and hungry, and it was dark. There were all those feelings. My acting coach told me to be aware in the scene. It's all very important to make this audience understand me as the man, Jonah. That was fabulous. I was fabulous. That running pat with the music was so great. I want to do it again. My still. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Wait a minute. Jerry, what are you doing? I'm interpreting the life and times of Jonah. I'm aware of that, but what is all this music and frantic behavior? Hmm? Well, I thought the music would add a little more to the excitement of the scene. Yeah, but the theme from Jaws? Really? <laughs> Well, sure, why not? Besides, everyone has heard this story before. Jonah sits in a whale's belly for three days, then gets spit out by the creature. He just needed something more to capture the audience's attention, something to help them remember my performance. Don't you think the story in itself is exciting enough? I certainly do. Who's that? That's God. 
Sounds like Jan Duty. It is. <laughs> it is Jan Duty. And she's playing God. Really? Shouldn't Tom Duty be playing that time? <laughs> hey, he's out of town. You need to be a little more open minded. Well, I am, but my mind is more open to what I think. Come on, you guys. We have a story to tell our congregation. And it has more to do with God and less with Jaws, the soundtrack. So, can we tell the story that the Bible intended, please? Sure, we can do that, right, Jerry? Sure, sounds fine. We can add the music and the action later. Okay, we can talk about that later. Now, on with the story. Places, everyone. I mean, all two of you. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to the story of Jonah. Our story this morning is taken from the book of Jonah, one of the minor prophets in the Hebrew Bible. There you go again, minor character. You said that the last time I betrayed Jonah. Nothing personal, Jonah. Remember, this is about Jonah. Silly me. I just got caught up in the character, that Jonah, and I become one. Sorry, it won't happen again. That's okay. Let's move on. Now, where was I? Oh, okay. Now, Jonah, which, by the way, in Hebrew means dove, was born the son of Amittai. One day, this prophet was called upon by the Lord with a command. Jonah! Yes, God. Jonah, I want you to travel to the city of Nineveh. Face the Ninevites and tell them of their wicked ways. But, but, but my Lord. Go now, preach to them, tell them of their sins. <clears throat> if they do not change their ways, there shall be bad times ahead for the Ninevites. Go, quickly. Now, one would think that Jonah would have gone to warn the people of Nineveh, but no. Jonah ran away from the Lord and jumped a ship in Jeppa, which was bound for Tarshish. As this voyage progressed, the seas became very turbulent. The Lord sent great winds and a storm that was so fierce, it threatened the ship's survival. In fear for their lives, the, sh the sailors threw cargo into the sea in order to lighten their load. Jonah had another idea. Well, uh, I'm a little tired, and I'm going to go down under and sleep. As Jonah was in a deep sleep, the captain urged him to call upon his god to stop the storm. All the sailors, after drawing lots, believed Jonah to be the responsible one in this angry storm that was put up upon them. They asked him, what is your origin? He replied, I am Hebrew and worship the Lord God in heaven who made the sea and the land. The sea got rougher. The sailors asked what they should do. Jonah replied, My Lord is angry with me. I know the storm is my, all my fault. Just throw me into the sea and I'm sure it will become calm again. Instead, the men tried to row back to land so they would not have to throw Jonah to the sea, but found no success. The sea became even more turbulent. The sailors cried to the Lord, please do not hold us responsible for killing this innocent man. And they threw Jonah overboard. The sea becomes immediately calm. As Jonah found himself flailing in the cold ocean waters, the Lord provided a whale to swallow Jonah up and provide housing for him for the next three days and three nights. Whoa, it's a little dark in here. I guess it could be worse. Yes, the alternative could have been worse and final for Jonah. But in the next part of our story, Jonah has a revelation of sorts. He prays to the Lord, saying, In my distress, Lord, you listen to my cry. Deep from the very heart of the sea, even though I have been banished from your sight, as water surrounds me, you have brought my life up from a pit, Lord. In my worst times, I remembered you, Lord. 
my prayer rose to you and your holy temple. With great thanks, I will sacrifice to you. I will make good on my vows. Salvation comes from the Lord. And with that, the Lord commanded that mighty whale to vomit Jonah out onto dry land. Whoa, I'm sure glad to be out of there and on land it's not moving. In the next part of our story, off he went to Nineveh. The Lord God appeared to Jonah a second time to deliver the word, saying, Jonah. Yes, yes, Lord. Jonah, I want you to deliver a message to the Ninevites. Yes, Lord. Tell these people that if they continue to be sinners and live as sinners, I will have no other choice than to overturn their city. What? I have to tell them that? Yes, and in 40 days. If they do not respond, it's over for the Ninevites. And the people heard the word loud and clear. They believed God and declared a fast. All of them, rich and poor, old and young, replaced their clothes with rags. Even the king of Nineveh removed his royal robe and donned rags, declaring, All man and beast shall be covered in rags. Give up their violence and their evil ways, and maybe God will be compassionate and turn away from his anger. And that's just what he did. Seeing how the Ninevites put down their evil ways... For he did not destroy Nineveh. So like that, the Ninevites turned, in, turned it around and became new people, a new community. They did. The negative in their lives was replaced by love and a true respect for their Lord. But it doesn't end here, does it? No, it doesn't. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Jonah was angry. Very angry. Didn't I say that? Lord, that's why I fled to Tarshish. Look, I knew that you were a compassionate God. Now look, take my life for it's better that way. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? Jonah thought, and thought. He sat down outside the city to see what would happen. The Lord provided Jonah with a vine over his head to shade the sun and provide comfort. But the Lord also provided a worm to chew the leaves of the vine so the sun would blaze on his head. Whew, it's so hot. I'm dying. You know, it would be better for me to die. Just let me die right here, right now. Just let me die. Jonah, do you really have a right to be angry about the vine? Well, I do, and I'm angry enough to die. Jonah, you have been so concerned about this vine, but yet you did not take on the responsibility to tend it or to make it grow. Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who don't know their right hand from their left, along with great numbers of cattle. Should I not be concerned about this city? Well... The Ninevites did repent, and they took a good look at their evil ways and turned themselves around. That's right. And all's well that ends well. Is that right? Don't you think so? Well, I've tried to do the right thing, like adding the music and the action, and... And in the end, so did the Ninevites. I suppose you're right, but it just doesn't seem fair. Life isn't always fair. I've heard that before. Look, you are all my children, and I love you all. But you are all different. You, Jonah, need to have faith in my love and compassion for you. There are always lessons to be learned. What you do with this lesson is entirely up to you. Learn from it, and you will grow to be compassionate and forgiving, just as your Father has taught you. Thank you, God. Your love is always with me. And may God's love and lessons be with you every day and always. The first reading is from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through chapter 10 and chapter 4, 
through verses 1 through 4. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up and go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a a three days walk across. Jonah began, began to go into the city going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and every, a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. It, then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the degree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God, and shall turn from their evil ways and from the from their violence that is in their hands. Who knows? May God relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that he will not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Teresh at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? The second reading is from the First Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Now concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who who loves God is known by him. May God bless the reading of this word. Amen. And I want to give you an applause because that was beautiful. <laughs> Our children's geographical orientation. Jonah lived in Gath Hefer, which is in northern Israel, and Nineveh is where Mosul, Iraq, is today. So he only had to go a little ways to the north to get to Nineveh when, when God said, "Go to Nineveh." What did he do? Yeah, he ran in the other direction. And actually, when I ask the next question, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you know the answer, because I want to see if any of the kids are going, to, are going to get the first shot at answering. So yeah, he went right in the other direction, and he went to Joppa, and he got on a boat. And then what did he do after he got on the boat? Anyone know? Raise your hand if you know. Anyone want to tell me? Yes, all right. He went to sleep. Yeah, he got on the boat and he went to sleep. And then the storm blew up and the storm was huge and it was rocking the boat all over the place. And then what happened? Sue? So, uh, well, he didn't fall overboard yet. What happened? Yes. 
Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, the crew got scared, and they were trying to figure out, okay, so who is causing God to rock this boat? God was really rocking the boat. And they realized that it was Jonah, and they said to Jonah, what should we do? Because your God is angry at us. And what did Jonah say that they should do? Throw him overboard. Boom. Throw me overboard. And they're like, ah, no, because we don't want to take your life. We don't want to take an innocent life. So they tried to row to the shore so they wouldn't have to throw him overboard, but they couldn't get there. And so then they threw him overboard. And what happened when he went overboard? Raise your hand if you know the answer. What happened to him when he went overboard? Yeah, we got a few of them. I'm gonna, I, my first hand, Tom, yours was the first hand I saw. Well, the, uh, the sea calmed down. So. Yeah, the sea calmed down. And what happened to Jonah? He got swallowed by a big fish or whale or whatever. We know whales can't swallow people, so, you know, may have been another kind of fish. But anyway, he was in the fish's belly for how many days? Everyone say it. Three, three days. Yeah, he was in the fish's belly for three days. And then what happened after three days? Got to give me the sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are amazing. The kids are like, wow, we've never seen adults make that sound before. Yeah, the fish vomited Jonah up onto the dry land. And then God said, go to Nineveh, Jonah. And Jonah did. And then he preached to the people who were so wicked. And they changed completely. And they became people that followed God. And they were so loving with each other. And that should be the ending of the story, right? I mean, like... The people were following God's ways, and it looks like even the animals were following God. You know, that should be the end of the story, but it's not. Why isn't it the end of the story? Yeah, Jonah got angry. He was, he was pouting. He was pouting. But God's like, what's wrong, Jonah? Nothing. Jonah, how are you? Fine. He was pouting. And do you know why he was pouting? Because he lost the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, Jason, that is so bad. Uh, anyone know why Jonah was pouting? Because he was hot. Right, he wanted his revenge. What did you say, Cindy? He said he was hot. Oh, yeah, well, later on he was hot. Yeah. He wanted revenge. He was vindictive. He's like, those Ninevites did so much stuff wrong, and I knew that you would forgive them if I asked them to change their ways, and darn it, you forgave them. I wanted them to burn to a crisp and eternal damnation, but you went and you forgave them. And now they're going to live well, and they're going to be with you. <clears throat> You know, I really like Jonah, really. I have a lot of compassion for him. Because, I mean, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand on this one, but have any of you ever pouted? You know, like, <laughs> never have. What's wrong? Nothing. And, you know, a lot of times when we pout, it's because we know we're like a little bit wrong, you know? We know that we've said or done something that's not quite right or that the other person has a good point, but we don't want to admit it, so we're just like, eh, I don't want to talk about it. And um, that's what Jonah was doing. He knew he was wrong. You know, he knew if he loved God that he should love these other people. But he just, he wasn't in that place yet. So this is my favorite part of this Bible verse. So he goes off to pout in a corner to have a big pout. And you know what God did? God made a vine or a bush to grow and to give him shade. God gave him a little space, you know? I mean, sometimes when we're in a big pout, we just need a little space. We need a little space of our own. We need a little time apart. 
We need a moment to kind of sort it out, to sort ourselves out. You know, so Jonah's there pouting away, and the vine is growing, giving him some shade, and maybe there's a cool breeze blowing. You know, and, and that's sometimes what we need to just be able to open ourselves, instead of defending ourselves, to open our hearts, to open our minds, to open some space in our being, to be able to listen to the other person or listen to God's love in us or to realize, you know, okay, I'm ashamed of what I said and I'm embarrassed that I'm ashamed and I just got to deal with it, you know. Sometimes we need that little space. And so that's what God gave Jonah by putting the vine over his head when he was pouting. But then at a certain point, God's like, okay, Jonah, that's enough time pouting. You know, and a worm ate up the vine. And then an east wind from the desert. If you look at the geography, the east wind came from the desert and blew on Jonah. And it was so hot <laughs> that he wanted to die. And then God gave his little lesson. He's like, you know what, Jonah? You're mourning because the worm ate the vine, and that was only there for a short period of time. Imagine how much I would mourn if I couldn't save these 120,000 people that I love so much, because they are my children, just as you are my child. So the good news today, the good news is if we're going down the wrong path, and we need to straighten out our lives that God is going to relentlessly pursue us in many ways to get us to turn around and change our ways. And the good news is that if God is calling us in a certain ways to help others and calling us for our talents and our gifts, that God is going to relentlessly pursue us so that we fulfill the calling to which we have been called. And it's all in the name of love. It's all in the name of love. We can't forget that that's the point of the whole thing, to love God and love one another and love our family and friends and especially love our enemies. So thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together in the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.